Happy Sabbath, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our Sabbath school service this morning. To start with our inspiration, let us first bow our heads for a word of prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God and yet our dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this wonderful Sabbath day that you have given to us, wherein we can rest, worship, and fellowship with one another. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our God. In Christ's worthy name we pray. Amen. For our first song, let's sing Savior Like a Shepherd. Shall we all stand and sing, What a Wonderful Savior, hymn number 335. Oh, 
The Bible says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, it says, According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be my magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For those who are able, kindly kneel with me as we pray. Our Almighty God, most loving, merciful, and gracious Heavenly Father, we kneel down with reverence with this Sabbath morning to glorify your most holy name. We thank you, Lord, for being with us throughout the week and for giving us another day of rest to celebrate your goodness. We thank you, Father, for knowing our needs, for being strong when we are weak, and for loving us for who we are rather than what we do. We pray for our Sabbath school program and all participants as they give glory and honor to your name. Help us, Father, to understand your will for us and that we may be a caring witness for Christ as we wait for his soon coming. All these things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Happy Sabbath, Sister Mary Ann. Happy Sabbath, Sister Irene. Happy, Happy Sabbath, Sabbath, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are glad to worship with you here in Pasay Adventist Church. We also like to greet those who are worshiping with us through our live stream at Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for choosing to worship with us this morning. May I ask our brothers and sisters to extend your hands and warm Sabbath greetings to those who are around you today. Thank you. I would like to acknowledge, we would like to acknowledge our Sabbath school program participants today. We thank you for sharing your time and talents to the service of the Lord this morning. What does it mean to become a follower of Christ? Sister Ellen G. White says in her book, The Ministry of Healing, page 502, Everyone who accepts Christ as his personal Savior will long for the privilege of serving God. Contemplating what heaven has done for him, his heart is moved with boundless love and adoring gratitude. He is eager to signalize his gratitude by devoting his abilities to God's service. He longs to show his love for Christ and for his purchased possession. He covets toil, hardship, sacrifice. The true worker for God will do his best because in so doing, he can glorify his master. He will do right in order, to, in order to regard the requirements of God. He will endeavor to improve all his faculties. He will perform every duty as unto God. His one desire will be that Christ may receive homage and perfect service. 
We as Seventh-day Adventist Christians are called to serve our Creator and our Savior. Let us pray earnestly that God directs our ways and guides us to do His will. As we encourage one another, let us hold on to God's promise found in Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the, for the good of those who love Him, who have been called to ac according to His purpose. For our special feature this morning, we shall be hearing testimonies from Sister Thelma Bolivar and Sister Lorraine Cortez. They are both working for Christ as literature evangelists. We shall be hearing their experiences, challenges, and encouragements as they walk with Jesus as they work with, for Him. We shall also be graced with a special song by Vielpea Lucrida. Our uh, Sabbath school lesson will be led by Elder Wilson Sia. We shall be having a single Sabbath lesson today. So I'm gone. 
Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. God is good. And all the time. Indeed, God is good. He is the father to the fatherless and a champion of widows. He provides house to those who are deserted and leads out prisoners to prosperity. I am Thelma Bolivar. I am a literature evangelist. I serve in this church as a deaconess and a Sabbath school teacher. God gave me a life experiences and His will for me to share it. Maybe you can learn through it. As a literature evangelist, we are called to prepare people to heaven through printed pages, carrying the Advent message to the remote parts of the globe as the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ nears. Literature evangelism continues to play its role in advancing the kingdom of our Lord in the hearts and the homes of people. The publication of this book is an attempt to remind us of the importance and relevance of the literature ministry. A heaven-born opportunity to participate in the final proclamation of the gospel to the world. If there is one work more important than another, it is that of the getting our publication before the public, thus leading them to search the scriptures. Introducing our publication into families, conversing and praying for them is a good work and one which will educate men and women to do a pastoral labor. Why did I choose to work as a culture ministry for Jesus? I did not choose to be a literature evangelist. It is God who chooses me. After college graduation, I landed a job as an office girl. But as soon as I, I noticed that as soon as I familiarized the work, na feel ko na nabuboard ako. Tapos I work as a clerk, a preschool teacher a cook, a fast food supervisor and the last and the last my last job before I got I got give birth to my to my son is a store manager at Robinson's Galleria in Ortigas. Tapos yung yung nagwo-work na ako after mga 5 years na bored na ako sabi ko pat kaya ganito na bored ako. Eh, yung job ko, okay na yun eh. Kasi meron naman akong good salary. Tapos, I come to meet ano, mga influential people, mga high profile as a customer. And, and yun, I was thinking na, despite the, the good job I have, 
bakit ako naboboard? I feel I feel empty, stressed, and bored. And nafi-feel ko rin na malayo sa akin ang Panginoon. Sabi ko, bakit ganun, Lord? So one time, kasi nga malapit ako sa, ang work ka na sa Robinson's Galleria, nandun doon yung Edsa Shrine sa Robinson's Galleria. So pumasok ako para ano, magsimba. And then, uh, so pagsisimba ko, Ma, yung taintim ang pagsisimba ko, sabi ko, Lord, tulungan mo akong makalapit sa iyo. Yun, yun yung prayer ko sa Panginoon. Gusto, gusto ko, Lord, na ano, maging, magkaroon tayo ng malapit ang relasyon para, kasi nga alam ko rin na, yun nga, yung nafe-feel ko na ang layo sa akin ng Panginoon, empty yung buhay ko kahit na meron na akong work, empty pa rin yung yung feeling ko sa sarili ko. After several months, after, after kong mag-pray, nakilala ko yung father ng anak ko. And because, 33 years old na ako, ginrab ko na rin yung opportunity. <laughs> I, I, and then I find out na hindi naman pala siya seryoso sa akin. Kaya ako, naging certified na single parents. Single parenting is is so hard. Not just for fi, not not just financially but emotionally. I raised my son alone and did not ask help. I did not ask help from anybody except from God. There was a time na ano, yung 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 natit- natitira namin pagkain sa ano sa sa table namin ano na lang uh, meron na lang akong rice oil garlic yan rice oil garlic <laughs> parang nahiya naman ako sa anak ko pinabukasan yun na lang ang kakainin namin so eh pinundisyon ko yung ano yung isip niya sabi ko anak bukas sa ano yung ang kakainin natin tinangag. <laughs> di, di kasi yung pero before that nagpray ako sa Lord na nang pag pag nanganak ako sabi ko Lord gusto ko bigyan mo ako ng anak na matalino, mabait at pogi. <laughs> Bin, <laughs> binigay naman ni Lord yan. So nang kinondition ko na nga yung isip niya, kinabukasan kakain na kami. Naku, nakita ko yung anak ko ang sarap ng kain niya sa sinangag. <laughs> sabi ko Parang na ano naman ako, sabi ko, Lord, thank you. Kasi yung, in, in, kumbaga, hindi na feel ng anak ko na ano, na yun lang yung kinakain niya. Kaya na, natuwa na rin ako. One time naman, bagong lipat kami ng anak ko sa isang bahay. Do, doon sa isang bahay, di, wala na naman kami makain. <laughs> sabi ko, Kinabukasan, sabi ko, wala na kaming kakainin. Sabi ko, Lord, bukas, wala na kaming pagkain. Tapos, bago mag, ano, bago mag kinabukasan, ano, mga 2, 2, 2 a.m., merong babaeng umiiyak yung kapitbahay ko, nananagwi siya. Tapos, pinababayaan lang siya ng mga, yung mga neighbor namin. Kasi, parang ano lang yun eh, yung compound. Pina, sabi ko, Sabi ko, ba't kaya siya pinababayaan? Sabi ko, alam nga namang ako pa yung, ako pa yung pumunta sa kanya. Eh, bago-bago nga lang ako dito. Tsaka nandun din yung, yung landlady ng house. Hindi, hindi siya pinapansin. Sabi ko, sabi ko, ako na nga lang kasi wala, wala namang gustong tumulong sa kanya. Tapos, di, pumasok ako sa house niya kasi nakabukas naman. Sabi ko, ate, bakit, bakit ka umiiyak? Sabi niya, si kuya mo, may sakit. Di, di, pumasok ako. Hinawakan ko si kuya, ganyan. Matigas na siya, tsaka ano, malamig, tsaka matigas. <laughs> Sabi ko, ngayon, doon lang ako nakahawak ng patay. sa ko, ganito pala yung patay, malamig, tsaka matigas. Sabi ko, ate, pat- patay na yan. Sabi niya, ay, patay na ba yan? Sabi niya, o sige, o sige, ano, bantayan mo si kuya mo at tatawagan ko yung mga anak ko dahil yung mga anak niya nasa work. Eh, nung time na yun, di pa naman uso yung cellphone or baka wala siyang cellphone. Ako rin, wala rin cellphone nung time na yun. 
Tapos di inayos na yung ano, inayos na yung burol ng asawa niya at dumating na yung mga anak. Yun, yung 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 pagkamatay ni Kuya, naging blessing sa akin yun kasi every day, every day nagpapadasal sila. Every day niya rin akong sinusuplayan ng pagkain. Every day niya akong sinusuplayan ng pagkain. Sabi ko, napakabait talaga ni Lord. Sabi ko, ganun, umiyak talaga ako. Sabi ko, ilang kaya kaming, ilang kaya kaming tao sa araw na yun na walang pagkain na sinuplay ng patay. Sabi ko, Lord, napakabait mo talaga. Kahit patay, gagamitin mo para lang masuplay yung needs ng mga anak mo. And then, uh, from, ano, from Kaloocan, bumalik ako rito sa Pasay. Tapos napatira naman, napatira naman ako sa bahay ng mga ano, Adventist. Mga, especially yung mga ano, literature evangelist din. Tapos yung work ko noon, yung, yung work ko noon, ang gusto kong work sana yung magtitinda ng lupat bahay, yung realty. Kaya lang merong nakatira doon na nagsabi na, Ate, hindi, hindi sa iyo bagay yung ano, yung magtinda ng bahay. Sabi sabi ko naman, eh anong bagay sa akin? <laughs> sabi niya, magtinda ka ng libro. Sabi niya, kaya lang ano, magiging uh, dapat maging Adventist ka. So, sa madaling salita, ka-invite nila nang ka-invite sa akin dito sa church, naging Adventist nga ako. And then uh, sa pagiging Adventist ko, na-meet ko si Ate Minda Aquino, kung kilala niyo si Ate Minda Aquino. Siya yung nagdala naman sa akin para ako ay maging literature evangelist. Yan. At noong 2009, ayun, noong 2009, ako ay nabaptize at yung anak ko naman ay nabaptize noong 2011. As a, as a single parent, struggle talaga siya kasi Siyempre, as a literature evangelist, yung wala naman kaming fixed income. Ano lang kami, yung pag nakabenta kami ng, ano, ng books, yun, meron kaming, meron kaming share para, para sa amin. So, minsan, yung, kasi pinag-aral ko yung anak ko rito, si Ate Minda rin yung tumulong sa akin para makapag-aral yung anak ko dito sa ating church school. Minsan, wala, wala akong pang tuition. Dahil wala akong sales eh. Wala akong pantuition. Tapos, hindi, hindi, ko pa siya, hindi ko pa siya na-enroll yung anak ko kasi nga, ano, wala pa akong pera. Pero pumunta pa rin ako sa school para mag-inquire lang ako kung, kung kailan yung pasukan. Dahil nakita ko si, nakita ako ni Ma'am Pulido, yung, yung teacher dati sa Pasay City Academy. Sabi niya sa akin, oh, bakit ano, bakit hindi ka pa nag-enroll? Sabi ko, ma'am, kasi wala pa akong pera. Sabi niya, eh paano pag hindi ka nagkapera? Hindi mo na pag-aaralin yung anak ko? <laughs> yung anak mo? Eh di, hindi naman ako kumibo. Sabi niya, o sige, mag-enroll ka na. <laughs> Nakutuntua talaga ako kasi <laughs> pumahiyag si ma'am na mag-enroll ako kahit wala akong pan-down payment. Tapos, ayun. Ayun. Na, na, naka-enroll yung anak ko tapos every year pinapayagan niya na akong makapag-enroll kahit ano kahit yung eh ko ba't sa pumayag na ganon hindi naman yung ganon yung pumapayag na siya na ano pumasok yung anak ko ng hindi pa yung wala, wala akong pang down payment pero after naman ng school year sinusupply naman ni Lord yung aming mga pangangailangan nababayaran ko rin naman lahat yon sabi nga ba diba, And God will supply all our needs according to His riches in heaven. And then itake ko na rin yung opportunity na pasalamatan si yung ating church school at yung mga teacher sa ano sa ng Pasay City Academy sa pag-unawa at pag-iintindi, pagmamahal na ibinibigay nila sa kanila mga students. At sa mga customer ko dito sa church. <laughs> Marami akong customer dito na ano na gusto kong pasalamatan kasi ano 
Gagraduate na rin yung anak ko. Eh, take ko yung opportunity na mag-thank you sa kanila kasi kung hindi, yung tuwing bibili sila sa akin ng libro, sila, sila yung aking katuwang sa pagpa, pagpapaaral sa anak ko. Thank you po sa mga customers ko dito. Maraming salamat sa inyo. And then, thankful din ako dahil nakapag, nakapag, nakap, nakasali nga ako sa lit literature ministry from then on, uh, 2011 until now, never akong naboard sa, ano, sa pagtatrabaho para sa Panginoon. Nawala na yung aking feeling empty, feeling bored, at feeling stress. Kahit na maghapon akong maglakad, magpapahinga lang ako ng 30 minutes, nawawala na yung pagod ko. Dahil, dahil alam ko na sa aking pagtatrabaho, ay kasama ko ang Panginoon at ang mga anghel na gumagabay at nagtuturo sa akin sa tamang landas. Kaya, kaya ako patuloy lang akong gagawa para sa kanya hanggang sa siya ay dumating. Sabi nga sa Romans 8.25, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Thank you. Good morning, happy Sabbath everyone. My part today is to share my experience as literature evangelist. I'm Lorraine Cortez, and I'm one of the cultures. LEs are considered missionaries because we are not receiving salary. Before joining publishing ministries, I work as HR staff in a maritime school. In January 2022, Its management released a memo that only vaccinated employees can report on site. But I already made a decision that I will not take it. I believe that the immune system that God gave me is enough. And that man cannot do better what God has done. I did everything I can just to be exempted from it. I talked to my HR head. I wrote to the company president, but even antigen test with negative result was not accepted for me to be able to enter the campus. So they keep on encouraging me to take the box, meaning I have to choose whether I accept the box or I lose my job. So not to hamper my assignments, I, de I decided to resign from my post. Having a sudden loss of my job affected my mental health. I can help myself but worry about our family finances. I kept on sleeping. That's the time I read an invitation from one of my group chat to attend an online LE devotion. I find peace of mind in the promises of God by reading the Bible, the Bible early in the morning with a group. From January to March, from January to March, I kept on attending the devotional, wherein we are also reading the Culpultor Ministry. There I learned the calling that being a literature evangelist is a work second to none. In April of last year, I started to join the online canvassing. Now that we are free to go out, some of the struggles I experience are when it's too hot 
to go out or when it's raining hard. It's not convenient to work in the field compared to the office where you are in the air-conditioned room. Sometimes, there is no sales to support even my transportation. But we are not only seeking for sales, we are seeking more importantly for souls. People that are hopeless and wanting for help. When things got challenging, I pray and remember the promises of God that I will be accompanied by thousands of angels and that the Holy Spirit will be the one to touch the hearts of the people. Let the convincing power of the Holy Spirit work. I just need to do my part. And true enough, God sustains my family's needs. The fulfillment of my work as an LE at the end of the day, with sales or no sales, I have shared the good news of salvation through the printed materials and have prayed with the people I visited. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we are experiencing challenges in our faith. Let us remember that the second advent is obviously nearing. Let's involve ourselves in the publishing ministry. It can revive and strengthen your faith. You'll be more prayerful because you will rely more on God. God can turn our afflictions into blessings. Kagaya ko po, parang pag-stress ako noon sa industry, sasabihin ko, Lord, may work pa po ba na hindi gaya nito ang pressure? Kasi parang nag-uwi ka na ng trabaho mo sa bahay, nag-extend ka pa, pero hindi mo pa, please, mo pa rin ma-please yung tao. Pwede po bang sa'yo na lang ako mag-serve? Let us... At yun po ang nangyari sa akin. Masaya na po ako naglilingkod sa Panginoon. Let us remember what is written in Romans 8.28 that all things work together for good of those who love God, who have been called according to His purpose. Let us get involved and support the publishing ministry to reach more people. There are many ways we can do this. We can buy two books or two magazines and sell or share one to others. If you have the means, you can sponsor a box or two or more to distribute to jails, to bus preaching, crusades, or to those who can't afford to buy like the people in our adopted barangays. Anyone who has a copy of our adult Sabbath school lesson? In its, in its inside cover, we can find this. Our mission, at the very start of the publishing work, the prophet said, the church members were to sell or give away literature. Manuscript 126-1902. Ministers and people should engage in circulation of books, pamphlets, and tracts as never before. Sell where people are able, to, are able and willing to purchase. And where or not, give them books. Let the canvassing work be left to languish. Let the books containing the light on present truth be placed before as many as possible. The presidents of our conferences and others in responsible positions have duty to do this. The publications sent forth from our printing houses are to prepare people to meet God. Throughout the world, they are to do the same work that was done by John the Baptist for the Jewish nation. We are fast approaching the end. The printing and circulation of the books and papers that contain the truth for the time are to be our work. From Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8, page 89. Lastly, I would like to share this. What is a literature evangelist? 
A literature evangelist is a self-supporting missionary with one main object in mind, to finish the work God has called him to do. He has many fears that he may be late to an appointment, that he may miss a prospect, that he may be misunderstood, that he may not do his best, that he may displease a customer, a colleague, or his maker. A literature evangelist is bold, forward, and aggressive, yet kind and courteous and compassionate. He greets more people than a politician, preaches more sermons than 10 evangelists. He has converts who never saw him and customers who never learned his name. He does the job that man can't do, wins the people who can't be seen, and sells to people who never buy. He loves the unlovely, prays with the unholy, and teaches those who are more unlearned than himself. He brings courage to the downcast, hope to the outcast, and joy to the offcast. He carries a burden on his heart, a smile on his face, and a peace in his mind. An ideal literature evangelist is immune to discouragement, slothfulness, and laziness. He is a member of a life craft in the storm, twisted billows of a mighty ocean. He urges men to abandon ship and accept the safety of God's lifeboat. He is a fireman compelling men to use the fire escape, a watchman on the walls of Zion giving the proper guy when the lion roars. He is the arm of God outreaching to our exploding world. A literature evangelist is a child of God on his knees with a book in his hand and a prospect on his heart. May God send us more just like him. Because there is no spot on earth where he is not needed. Thank you for listening and hope you've learned something about publishing ministry. When we serve the Lord and do His commands, we learn to trust Him and His Word fully. We can be assured that He is faithful with His promises. We would like to request our deaconesses and our deacons to receive our Sabbath school offerings this morning. And um, we shall be um, watching our uh, mission spotlight for this Sabbath. Hundreds of motorcycles flooded the streets of Serbia on their way to the Adventist Motorcycle Ministry Bike Festival. This event brought together bikers from all over Europe. Adventists offered the crowd food, books, and health checks all for free. Musicians provided live music on stage as people lined up at a booth nearby to donate blood. The Adventist Motorcycle Ministry team is implementing Christ's method of ministry by connecting with people who have similar interests and mingling with them, creating an opening for attendees to learn about Jesus. An event like this is important because many different people from many different cities or many different countries can come and be together. They can learn from each other, they can get along and they can have a good time together. People gathered to talk and admire each other's bikes. The quality time allowed new friendships to develop and deeper conversations to take place. Reactions of people is really wonderful. In this motorbike fest, you can see people who want to help you, people who want to be friends with you and who want to speak with you and we want to reach people for Jesus during these things. More than 400 books from the Serbian Adventist Publishing House were distributed. One of the most popular was Steps to Christ, 
every heart who will came, every soul who will came, and every soul who will read a step to Christ, I think can feel Jesus in his or her heart. We can teach them it's another way, a better way to be uh, with God, to be near God, uh, and to have a different life, a better life. This event piqued Zelomir's interest because it was different from other motorcycle festivals he'd attended. After 62 consecutive days of riding and attending motorcycle events, Zelomir made sure to end his journey here. He expressed great appreciation for the unique programs and people. I hope more events like this continue and that we can have friendship together and ride together. After seeing the turnout for this festival, the Adventist Motorcycle Ministry team was encouraged to do even more. My heart is full because a lot of people came. We want to reach people for Jesus, that people can see that someone can live different without drugs, without alcohol, without immoral, and that heart will be full of Jesus and expect Jesus like his or her savior. God has a plan for each person who attended this event. Please pray for the Adventist Motorcycle Ministry in Serbia. Pray that people will come to know Jesus as a result of this creative ministry. Thank you for supporting Mission. At this point, we would like to call on the birthday celebrants for June, those who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries and their baptismal anniversaries. We have a little token for you. So we would like to invite the birthday celebrants who are the birthday celebrants for June. Please come in front. Those who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries and their baptismal anniversaries. Um, please come to the front. We have a little token for you. Thank you so much, brothers. Thank you so much. Happy birthday, happy anniversary, and happy baptismal anniversary to each one of you. And we are 
We are requesting Pastor Peter Moral to pray for each and every one. May I request everyone, those who are able to please stand and join us in prayer for this special occasion. Let us bow our heads and let's pray. Our great God and loving Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts full of gratitude and thanksgiving for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. As we celebrate this day for the special occasions in the month of July, we ask for your continued guidance and protection, protection for each of our lives. For those celebrating their birthdays, Lord, we pray that you fill their hearts with joy and happiness. May they be surrounded by the loved ones and friends who uplift and encourage them on this special day. May they continue to grow in your wisdom, strength, and grace as they journey through life. We pray also for those who are celebrating their anniversaries that we you bless their union and strengthen their relationship, their bond, and love. May they continue to support and cherish one another and may their love for each other grow deeper with each passing day. We pray also for those who have accepted you as their personal Savior, that they will continue to experience you in their lives as they journey in this life and be a blessing also to their loved ones and others. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every person celebrating a special occasion for this month. May they will be filled with peace, joy, love, and may they continue to seek your will in all that they do. We thank you, dear Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Today is the first Sabbath of the third quarter of this year, 2023. Time is really very fast. But safely through another week, we are all here. And safely through another quarter, God is leading us in another new study for our Sabbath school. I would like to welcome all our visitors. I have seen a lot of visitors today. And uh, we welcome you. And also to our regular Sabbath school members and regular church members, welcome. And of course, to those who are joining us through the live stream, Welcome to our Sabbath School Lesson Review. Before we proceed, shall we all pray? Our loving Father, the great evangelist of all, and through the Holy Spirit have used men and women to propagate your gospel. Lord, this morning we are privileged that as your church, 
we're going to study one of the special books in the New Testament, and that is the book of Ephesians. May the Holy Spirit be our constant teacher in our study and lead us more and more closer to Jesus Christ. Grow in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, in 30 minutes, my task this morning is to give you the overview of this whole quarter and, of course, the summary of the first lesson. And if time will permit, if I will not consume the whole 30 minutes, I will be giving the time for you, not for questions, but for additions. If I have forgotten some points in our lesson, that is what I'm going to give you the opportunity. But no question, please. Of course. We have our lesson guide already. So those who are uh, already holding this guide in your hands, praise the Lord. For those who are not yet holding this and uh, not using this in your homes, please secure it now at our pastoral office or to our treasury room for your lesson guide for July up to December of this year. This is the uniqueness in the Philippines. We have a lesson guide for six months. So if you are not going to secure it, you will be lost for six months, brothers and sisters. Now, let's go to our lesson. Our lesson quarter for July to September will lead us into the study of the book of Ephesians. One of the Paulian epistle, letters of Paul to the people. The, the writings of Paul are divided into three. And Ephesians belongs to the second category. A letter to all, for general. That last part is the pastoral letters. And you know what those letters are, the minor letters like Philemon and the other letters, have other writings of Paul. But this Ephesians is one of the beautiful letters of Paul written. And this quarter, in a glimpse, we can see here the outline of the lesson topics that we're going to have. And, mind you, in 2005, we already studied the book of Ephesians, the last quarter of 2005, if you can still remember. And it focuses on relationships, the gospel of relationships. Ephesians. Remember that? But this time, we're not going to consider more on relationships. We are, we are going to consider this one. How to follow Jesus in what? In trying times. Are we in trying times? Yes. Never in the history of this world we can compare our time to the rest. We are living not only in the end times, we are living in the most trying times of this sin-sick world. And the main contributor of our lesson Elder John McVeigh, who is an ordained uh, 
minister of the gospel, a New Testament specialist. He's a doctor of New Testament studies and now president of Walla Walla University. And this is our focus, not relationships. The focus is Ephesians speaks especially to the times like our own in which the allure of the world and the passing of time. Time is very fast. We are already 2023. Threaten to dull Christian discipleship. I've checked the meaning of dull. To lose interest. To make it not interesting. This is the time that we are living now. Christian discipleship is not an interesting thing. It's not an interesting principle anymore. Why? What is true Christian discipleship? Brothers and sisters. Through Christian discipleship, we are told that Christian discipleship is what? Number one, being changed by Christ. If you are changed by Christ, you are a disciple of Christ. And it doesn't end there. Following Christ. If you follow Christ, you are a disciple of Christ. And the last element of Christian discipleship is what? Doing the mission of Christ. That is a true Christian disciple. If you are changed by Christ, if you are following Christ, and if you do the mission of Christ, that is it. And that is what is happening now. Some people just like to be changed. They don't want to follow. Some people just like to follow and follow and follow, but no change. But there are also disciples who are doing the mission of Jesus Christ, but in some point, they are not following, or nor there is no change in them. So it has to be complete, brothers and sisters. And this is what the world is doing now, making it dull, not interesting, no light, no excitement on how to be changed, how to follow, and at the same time, how to do the mission of Jesus Christ. So, at the end of this quarter, let us ask ourselves, am I a true Christian disciple? Am I a true disciple of Jesus Christ. This is the very trust of our lesson this quarter, brothers and sisters. Now, let's go to the background of the book of Ephesians. The letter to the Ephesians by Paul. The letter to the Ephesians, of course, the writer was whom? Paul. I was a prisoner in the Rome for the sake of the gospel, but my love for the Ephesians led me to write you a letter. The church at Ephesus is special and close to the heart of Paul. There is a special spot in the heart of Paul, in the ministry of Paul, the people of Ephesus. And Paul is not alone, was not alone. He was with Dr. Luke, the great historian, Dr. Luke. And it says, I was a companion of Paul on many missionary journeys, and in the book of Acts, I relate many of his stories. And another person, the right arm of Paul 
in the mini- in his ministry to the Ephesians is Tikokos. Tikokos, he said, I would go around the homes, churches, reading the letter around to the believers. That was the ministry in support to Paul's ministry by Tikokos. So the first lesson this quarter, brothers and sisters, will give us a sketch of what we're going to have for the whole quarter. A background. Paul and the Ephesians. Lesson number one. And we have a team text found in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 9 to 10. And it says, making known to us the mystery of His will according to His purpose, which He set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time and to unite all things to Him, things in heaven and things on earth. This points us later on to the very existence of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. 160 years ago, the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church is to prepare a people according to His purpose in the light of the Revelation chapter 14, the three angels' messages. And in doing that, our church's objectives is to what? Number one, preaching. Number two, teaching. Number three, healing. And number four, discipling. These four objectives are in this memory verse. To teach, to preach, to heal, and to disciple. Our lesson for this quarter trace back its beginning, its history in 52 AD when Paul himself embarked into his second missionary journey. And this missionary journey led him to where? To Ephesus. The fourth biggest cities of Asia Minor, a province of Asia. Not Asia today, but the Asia during the Roman Empire. And we can see there the small city of Ephesus. After staying there for one year, evangelizing people, preaching Jesus, introducing Jesus as the Savior of all, people are change, people are interested, people, many people like what Paul is saying, they find light in what Paul is preaching. But time comes when Paul needs to go. And he said, I cannot stay, but I will be back. People said, stay with us for a while. Is pay for us with more, more years, more time. Please, Paul. But Paul said, no, I have to go. And so, but in 53 to 56 AD, three years, Paul again went back to Ephesus. And he stayed there, they with them for three years, and there he lived many adventures, many, many experiences 
with the new believers and because he wanted to consolidate the church, he developed a, a circle of elders, a board of elders per se in our time today. He had developed that to consolidate, to strengthen the church for three years. But time come again that he needs to go. He will go to Macedonia. But six years later, in other letters, Paul greets his friends by name, but in this one, he does not. Because Ephesians is a circular letter, meaning they are all for all audiences. The writings, the letter is for all audiences, and it was read in many other churches, not only in Ephesus, but in all Asia. But who in mind? The church at Ephesus, the Ephesians. But what elements should we know about the letter to the Ephesians before we approach its study? And this is what we're going to summarize this morning. The summary of our lesson for this week. Number one, is the context of our lesson. What is the context? The context is focus on Ephesus. We can liken Ephesus into Pasay City today. Pasay City is a travel city. We, have, uh, we are near to the port, and we are a rich city. Everything is here. But of course, we don't have a wonder of the world here. Because in Ephesus, there is this one of the seven wonders of the world. And what is that? The church where this goddess named Artemis, or the Roman called this goddess Diana, is where. We can find this in the heart of the city of Ephesus. The patron goddess of the city. And Tychicus was Ephesian, and he can tell us about her. And what are the things about Artemis? Artemis or Diana was the supreme deity, the goddess of fertility. Diana was the center of civic ceremonies, sports games, and annual celebrities. So that's why this is the tourist spot, the point of tourism. She was a goddess of fertility because she has what? He has a lot of breast. And if you want to be fertile, you go to that goddess and pray. And this made a great impact, not only in the people of Ephesus, but to the whole Asia and to other parts of the world. Diana Artemis was very popular, and many are believing in her. Many books are written on her. Many practices, many cultures, many traditions were based from this goddess. But here came Paul, teaching about Jesus, teaching who Jesus is. His life, his teaching, his sacrifices, his death on the cross, his second coming. And many became disciples of Jesus Christ. And in this next picture, 
We can see some of the disciples of Jesus Christ recorded in Acts chapter 19, verse 13. In the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out from this what? From this man who was possessed. And you know the, the evil spirit in this man said, I know Jesus and I know who Paul is, but who you are. <laughs> so that's how uh, powerful exorcism and all kinds of uh, false religion and false practices they are doing there. And so they, they fled from the house naked and wounded in Acts chapter 19 and people are scared and people also are practicing what? sorcery in that time because of Artemis and Diana. But when the preaching, the teachings of Paul reached the heart of these people, our lesson this week recorded one incident. And what is that incident? The burning of the books of sorcery. The burning of the books of these people who are practicing spiritism in our time. They got all their books and they burn it in public. It says here, it amounted to 50,000 silver coins or equivalent for today in our money, 4 million U.S. dollars. What is the significance of burning books, brothers and sisters, in the ancient times? Today, its significance is no longer the same. Because during the ancient times, when you burn books of the same kind, you are putting an end to one teaching. You are putting an end to one culture. You are putting an end to one tradition. And that was the significance of burning books. So if you want the future generations to forget about those teachings, burn books. And that's what they did. They burned books. They burned the books about Artemis. They burned the books about sorcery and, and it, everything that is against God, against the teaching of Paul. And so what happened? Some people were not happy. Tychicus said what a temple it was. It had 127 pillars of 18 meters made of pure marble. 36 of those pillars were covered with gold. And it was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the temple of Artemis. And when they heard about the burning of books, people came, rioting, mobbing, in the amphitheater. And for two hours, they are shouting and shouting what? Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Have you experienced shouting for two hours? <laughs> and this is what happened when the people were divided. When the people who still remain to be believers of Diana, they went into the amphitheater and for two hours, they what? They are shouting their belief. They are professing their faith. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Contrary to the teaching of Paul. Because Paul's influence, Paul's impact, not only to the 
faith and religious spirituality of the people. It even impacted the economy, the tourism of Ephesians, of Ephesus per se. That's why they are in opposition. They made a riot in the amphitheater, but it was stopped by the authorities. So that led to Paul leaving Ephesus for his third, uh, after his third missionary journey. And he made a stop in Melitus. And he was left with a great concern. And he said, After my departure, grievous wolves will come among you and try to destroy the flock. This was his words to the elders of the church. And six years later, even from among yourselves, there will arise some who will teach falsehoods to draw away the disciples to follow him. That is in Acts chapter 20. Now let's go to the second point, the recipients of the book of Ephesians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God to the saints and faithful in Christ who are in Ephesus. The target audience was, to be, be, was the people of Ephesus. And this letter was meant to be read aloud in the homes, in the churches of the believers. And Tychicus said, Brothers, Paul had sent us the letter from his prison in Rome. I must read it before you all. The book of Ephesians is not a personal letter, but it is a letter for several families also who were gathered. And what else? The recipients of this letter are the host family, meaning the believers, and then their slaves and principals, their clients of the head of the household attendant, attended, and this book also included a special message for some of these groups. And now the third element is the content. What is the content of the book of Ephesians? The book of Ephesians which was given around 362 AD have this. Number one, God chose us before the foundation of the world. This is one of the messages, the content. Number two, expression of praise to God. Number three, the salvation in Christ Jesus alone. And lastly, the metaphors. What are these metaphors? Metaphors that Christ is the head and we are the body. We are the member, members. Christ is the head of the church. And we are also likened into a beloved wife. And also an ecclesia. Paul used the word ecclesia, meaning universal church. These are the metaphors being used by Paul in the book of Ephesians. And the didactic and wonderful messages for us today. That is where, what we are going to find in the book of Ephesians. And what else? Ephesians 1, 9 to 10 says, our team text, and in the book of Ephesians, 30 times the praise in Christ was used. Exalting who Jesus Christ is, brothers and sisters. So that is the overview of our lesson 
for this quarter. The context, the recipient, and the content of the book of Ephesians. In closing, brothers and sisters, let me share with you this. Found in the Ellen G. White writings in support to our lesson for this week. It says, Paul was a living example of what every true Christian should be. He lived for whom? For God's glory. His words come sounding down the line to our time. For me to live is what? Is Christ. God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. He who was once a persecutor of Christ in the person of his saints now holds up before the world the cross of Christ. Paul's heart burned with a love for souls and he gave all his energies for the conversion of men. There never lived a more self-denying, earnest, persevering worker like him. His life was what? His life was Christ. He worked the works of Christ. And all the blessings he received were prized as so many advantages to be used in what? in blessing others. What a wonderful evangelist. What a wonderful disciple of Jesus Christ. And may the study of the book of Ephesians not only help us this quarter to emulate Paul himself, but above all, to be like Jesus. To continue His mission. To be changed by Jesus. To follow Jesus. And to do the mission of Jesus Christ. That ends our lesson, brothers and sisters. And uh, sorry, we have no more time. Please attend our lesson preview. We have more time there for sharing. Thank you and may God bless us all. Okay, hey, good morning and happy Sabbath. So this is our personal ministry's time. And today the music ministry will share insights on the importance of it in personal ministry. Uh, this is an instrument for proclaiming God's greatness and love to all believers. From our two great minds, From Plato and Pythagoras, our ancient uh, philosophers, it says, Music is the language of the soul, and music is the language of the heart. So the only language that enters the heart and soul without having passed through the brain is music. Its ability to create the sense of belonging between individuals that is why music ministry plays an important role in church that unites believers to one another. So the Apostle Paul instructed the Colossians 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with great gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. It's found in Colossians 3.16. So the main purpose of music ministry is to share the gospel of Christ through song. Encourage believers to their walk with Christ and lead the congregation in worship and provide the avenue through which individuals may share their gifts and be an integral part of worship service. So we are delighted that Pastor Adventist Church is rich in talents and leaders when it comes to music. We have an efficient music ministries council that fuels the music into Christ-centered, right-wing, and achieving to be faithful to the doctrines of Seventh-day Adventists. Our music council, composed of musicians, leaders, doctors, teachers, and implementers. So we have here, uh, you can see, uh, if you want to be part of the services of the church, you can approach these people. So music ministry is to distort, uplift, and encourage the body of Christ, which is us, by praise and worship through songs. So can you imagine a church program without music? So music ministry encompasses the praise team, the adult choir, the youth choir, the children's choir. So here in Pasa Adventist Church, we are blessed to have so many choirs. So I just want to promote our regular choirs. We have the senior choir, the PAC choir. And they, if you want to join them, there are uh, no age limit. Next, the youth choir, or they call themselves as the Lifeline Choral. So they are the youth choir of our church. Uh, collegiate choir, they are uh, college students and young professionals. They call themselves as Praise Advocate Chorus. We have also teen choir. If you have teenagers to join us, uh, they call them their group as Young Ambassadors. And also we have a kids' choir, the Angels Echo, for the children of our church. And for all the males who want to join their uh, voices, we have men, men's chorus, and they call themselves as Men of Praise. And after which, the Lifeline Choral graduated from uh, their group. They can have their own uh, choir, and they call themselves as Lifeline Alumni Music Ministers. So, hopefully, we can create women's choir. As of now, we have no women's choir. And revive the instrumental ensembles. So, it is nice to imagine that all of us will be part of the heavenly choir. So to further enhance the knowledge of music, we have conducted seminars, workshop for song leaders. They teach, uh, we teach them the basic conducting, uh, pulpit decorum, on how to uh, perform in front of the congregation and to choose the right songs for each church services. So we'll have a part two of this training for song leaders soon. So last July, June 24, sorry. Last June 24, I was privileged to attend the CLC Music Leaders Fellowship. It was, I was given the opportunity to welcome all the delegates from Area 1 to 10 of Central Luzon Conference. It was an informative and fun fellowship 
to all CLC-wide music leaders. And then tomorrow, uh, July 2, there will be a basic song leadership seminar to be held at CLC Cuqueco Hall. And this is only limited slots, but I know there will be another certification uh, level seminar soon. And soon, we will be hosting the major event in choral singing. For the whole month of October, we will be having an afternoon of music for all choirs for Metro Manila Choral Festival. After this uh, festival, we are planning to invite CLC-wide areas for another choral festival. And then the next one is to capture the Interfaith Choirs, a major invitational choral festival from other religions around Metro Manila. And this is the essence of our music evangelism. So the gift of music is closely related to preaching and teaching of God's Word. In Psalm chapter 9, verse 11, it says, Sing praises to the Lord who sits enthroned in Zion. Tell among the people his deeds. So let us continue to pray that God will always be with us. Pray for our music ministers and continue in supporting the plans of music ministry. So if you want to reach us, you may approach any members of the Music Council and feel free to talk to us. Uh, you may also email us with your concerns at paacmusic23 at gmail.com. So thank you and happy Sabbath to everyone. For our closing song, let us all rise and sing Holy Thine. Adventist Hymnal 308.
May I request the congregation to stand for a closing prayer. Let us bow our heads and close our eyes as we pray. Our dearest Heavenly Father, we praise you for a wonderful Sabbath school program today. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be able to study your word and to know your will for us through the Bible. May we always put your words in our hearts and may we live according to your will. Please continue to guide us and bless each and every one of us and let us remain faithful unto you until you come again. Please prepare our minds and our hearts for the divine worship. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Shabbat Shalom, my dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to Pasay Adventist Church Worship Service. We would like to greet uh, all of you with joy and gratitude that we welcome you all to our Sabbath worship here in Pasay Adventist Church. We are truly blessed to have you in our uh, uh, worship service today as we come together to honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To our beloved members and to our visitors also, coming from different places, we, we, we extend our warm and heart, heartfelt welcome to all of you. We are delighted that you have chosen our church to be your uh, worship, uh, to be your place of worship today. And also we pray that you will be blessed and you feel at home in our church and be blessed by our worship that we have for you today. And also to our online worshipers, we would like to welcome each one of you wherever you are. May God's presence and Holy Spirit be your experience this Sabbath morning. Before we... Continue, I would like to uh, share to you an important announcement, and uh, it will be flashed on the screen. This will be our announcement for these upcoming days. First, uh, the, there, there will be a bloodletting program tomorrow, July 2, 2023, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., here in Pasay Adventist Church, there will, this, this will be held in Sapphire Hall, there at the, that side of our church. So if you want to donate blood to save other people's lives also, please come at 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. here at Pasay Adventist Church tomorrow, July 2, 2023. Another one is on July 8, 2023, this will be on next uh, Sabbath. There will be a child dedication. So if you plan to ded dedicate your child, kindly visit our pastor's office and look for our secretary to secure the application form. And also we have, uh, on this coming uh, July 8 also, 2023, at 2 p.m., the, the, uh, this will be in AY time. There will be a musical concert of Celebio family. So we are inviting you all to join this special program, a musical concert of Celebio family. Again, this will be on July 8, 2023 at 2 p.m. Next is... The, fa the Pacey Family Ministry is inviting all married couples to join the seminar for couples at the Multipurpose Hall on July 8, 2023 with the theme, Closer You, uh, Closer you I, and God. And you may register to Elder Wilson Sia 
or you can send a message to this number, 0917-843-9596. So for all couples you, who want to um, enrich your relationship to be more closer to God, please join. Uh, the Pacey family is inviting you to join this couple seminar. And also on July 16 to 22, 2023, there will be a vacation Bible school. So all children ages 7 to 14 are all invited. So if you have your children ages 7 to 14, please register your children. This will be again on July 16 to 22, 2023. And also for those who haven't yet secured their, their uh, lesson quarterly, our Sabbath school lesson quarterly are available at PAC office. Uh, you can uh, look for our secretary and you can secure your Sabbath school lesson quarterly. And last, finally, our Sabbath school lesson preview will be held this afternoon at the common room at 2 p.m. This will be led by Brother Logan Manocho. So we, we encourage all our Sabbath school teachers to join this Sabbath school lesson preview, and especially for our church elders. So once again, welcome to our Sabbath worship service today. May God bless us all as we come before Him in worship and praise.
for our call to worship. Let me read to you a quotation from the Great Controversy, page 452, on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is God's gift to humanity, a day upon which we are to rest from our own works and delight ourselves in the beauty and grandeur of nature in the contemplation of the goodness of God. It is a day for worship and for spiritual refreshment, a day that we can draw closer to God and to one another. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 95, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, Come, let us sing joy, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and extol Him with music and song. Let us lift our voice in praise and worship to our God, who is worthy of all honor and glory. And may our hearts be filled with gratitude as we enter into His presence and offer Him our worship. Shall we sing Jesus Shall Reign, hymn number 227.
Our loving God, our Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, we come right at this moment approaching thy throne of grace. Have mercy on us. We bring back all the glory and honor to your name. And we want to uh, commit our time right at this moment as we worship you in truth and in holiness. And may we, you guide us with your Holy Spirit that we may comprehend the things that we need to learn today as we open your words, your Bible. Thank you so much, Lord, for guiding us of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As we worship the Lord through returning God's tithes and our generous offering, let me read to you a passage from Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I want to share to you also a story of Felipe from Peru. The title is The Man with the Curious Cup. Felipe lives in the city of Lima, Peru. He has decided this life to sharing the love of Jesus with others. But not long ago, Felipe was searching for a meaningful relationship with God, but he hadn't found it in the church he had attended. However, God wasn't ignoring Felipe. He used a cup to lead Felipe to the Savior and the Adventist Church. Every day, Felipe, Felipe walked to work at a university. One day, he passed a store where he saw a cup that caught his eye. He loved interesting baseball cups and had never seen one like that cup in the window. He stepped into the store and brought the cup, and bought the cup, and then he wore it the rest of the day. Felipe was not aware of the significance of the logo on the cup. At work, some people asked Felipe if he knew the meaning of the logo on the cup, but he did not. Someone asked him if he was an Adventist, and he answered, No, I am not an Adventist. But his fellow workers questioned, uh, but his fellow workers' questions made Felipe curious. So he went looking for an Adventist church. Felipe saw a man selling orange juice and asked him if he knew about Adventists. I'm an Adventist, the orange seller said. And the two walked for some time, and then the orange seller invited Felipe to go with him to go to an Adventist church the next weekend. Felipe agreed. When the two men arrived at the church, Felipe went, uh, felt welcome and decided to return. Not long after, Felipe was sure that he had found God's church and God's plan for his life. Phil Felipe was to join the Adventist church. My life is more than complete, Felipe says. God has answered my prayers and now I tell other people about him. Felipe knows that God can use anyone or anything, including a cup, to lead a soul to the Savior. God has a thousand ways to get people's attention, even a hat. He wants us to have a part in introducing others to Jesus too. As we faithfully return our tithes and our promise offerings to God, we support the mission the work at home and around the world. Be a part of God's evangelistic efforts through praying, giving, and telling those we meet that God loves them. Our deacons are now ready to serve and receive our tithes and offerings.
Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we praise you and we thank you for your generosity for us, your unconditional love that you have sustained us. We thank you, dear Lord, for what we have right now. May our lives be an instrument that will reach other people to tell about your love and whatever resources we have, may this will be used for your glory. And we pray, dear Lord, that you bless the hands that return the tithes and offering. And even those who didn't give, remember them and may they will be filled by your love that you have been faithful to us even though we are unfaithful. And may this faithfulness that you have shared to us will be our motivation our, for, you, for loving you more. And may these tithes and offerings will be used for the furtherance of your words. Thank you so much for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For our scripture reading this morning, let's open our Bible in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 to 12. And the word of the Lord says, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, all of nations, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. To those who are able, may I invite you to please kneel down with me for a word of prayer. Father, we come before your throne of grace this very blessed Sabbath morning, grateful for your love, grateful for your abiding presence, for the so many blessings that we receive during the week, and for this opportunity that we enjoy the blessing of coming here and worship you in spirit and in truth. Fill us now, Father, with your Holy Spirit, that as we worship you today, we will learn more things about you, we will know you more, that will motivate us to come closer and stay faithful till you come. Bless our uh, divine worship this morning. Bless the congregation, <clears throat> those who are here with us face to face, and those who are watching online. We will truly be a blessing to our fellow men as we study your words this morning. We will be strengthened in our faith in you that whatever trials come along our way as we journey through heaven, we will remain true, faithful, and loyal to you. At this very hour, O oh God, I lift up to you, Pastor Jemuel Absede, as he will be delivering your message this morning to your people. 
Give him the power, Lord, that he may deliver your words with vigor and strength that will uh, enable us to be more faithful and steadfast in our love to you. In a very special way, dear Lord, I, I lift up to you a prayer request from Alame the Mayo Bagalanon, as she will be having an NLEX, NCLEX examination this coming July 5. May you bless her. Help her, Lord, to remember that what he, she has studied, that she will be able to pass this NCLEX exam. And most of all, Father, I lift up to you my cousin who is now at Mamsi Room 212. Our family has been very grateful, dear Lord, for your faithfulness to us these past few days. Our request has been granted. And I continually pray, Father, that you will visit him now in his room and give him the, your healing hands that he will be able to recover soon and fast. Thank you, loving God, that you are faithful, even though most of the time your people are faithless. But these past few weeks, Father, I know all of us have experienced you in some in different ways. And may this experience, Lord, be our testimony as we wait for your soon return. Thank you so much, Father in heaven, for granting our request, together with the forgiveness of all our sins. For we ask all this in the loving name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, kids. My name is Kuya CL. Today's lesson is to remind us to trust God's love. Today's memory verse is found in Hebrews 11, verse 1. Please repeat after me. Now faith is confidence. In what we hope for. What we hope for. And assurance. Assurance. 
about what we do not see. About what we do not see. I ha I have a box here. Can anyone tell me what this is? This is a box of Syria. Can anyone tell me what's inside this box? What? What happened? It says it's cereal. It says it's cereal. It sounds like cereal. Our eyes and our ears told us it was cereal, but it was not cereal. I have another box here. Here. It looks like cereal. It sounds like cereal. But let's really find out if it's cereal. Oh, good. This box really has cereal. So kids, sometimes things aren't what they really appear to be. And we can't be sure that our eyes and our ears are truly seeing and hearing things the way they are. But there is one thing we can always be sure of, and that is God's love for each one of you and me. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 1 that faith is to be sure of the things that we have not seen. God is as sure as the box of breakfast cereal that always has breakfast cereal in it. And when you have faith in God, you can trust Him and believe that He will always take care of you. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we want to have faith in you. Teach us to believe in you and to trust you even if we can't see you. Thank you for always loving us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may know and we now go back to your parents.
Thank you so much for that wonderful song that uh, we have heard. Thanks be to God. I am so thankful for uh, what God has done for us uh, all throughout the week. Are you happy that uh, God has led you successfully in all of your endeavors for this week? Would you say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Some of us, some of our relatives, loved ones, maybe uh, um, they have uh, sickness, and yet um, God is favorable with them, and God uh, have uh, provision for them, extending His healing hands, heal them, to heal them. And some of us maybe have some problems that along the way, the things to comfort us, to be uh, relieved from whatever circumstances, hardships that we have. Some of our friends, some of our um, relatives, loved ones who... Uh, we're so happy and uh, enjoy uh, rejoicing for their uh, graduation. I have seen a lot of young people who are present right now. I have uh, the eagle uh, eyes. I can see uh, some of them who are here, some of my students uh, in the college and also uh, in uh, the law school. I, I see some of them. And many things that we need to give thanks to the Lord. I believe you have a lot of things to be uh, uh, thankful and grateful unto the Lord. Today, on the watch is five minutes to twelve. But I will make sure that uh, I will uh, stop if, that, uh, if my uh, uh, message is over. My dear brothers and sisters, um, just in a moment, uh, the choir will come back, the three of them. I requested them. And this morning, this day, it's just a mix of uh, messages, but I will comprise it. I will uh, make it uh, compact with three things. Just um, giving uh, thanks and also a pastoral message and uh, as well as uh, farewell to my dear PAC. And uh, this will be the last, uh, I will not die, my dear friends, but this will be my last stand in my services, in my ministry in Pasay. Uh, but I'll be, uh, I'll still be here. Nakatapak pa rin po ako sa lupa. Ng Pilipinas. Okay, I will not go uh, uh, abroad. I will not go in other planets. And uh, if ever, we will see each other from time to time. But at this point, my dear brothers and sisters, just to maximize my time this morning, I'd like you to uh, focus on the things which God has made a provision for us, preparing a way for us of our destiny because I believe God is so merciful, God is so kind, God is so good to all of us. My message this morning is entitled, The Overcomers. Are you one of the overcomers? How many of you have struggles in life, obstacles, difficulties, and yet you pass through all 
uh, this kind of uh, circumstances in your life? Are you an overcomer? My dear brothers and sisters, in Revelation chapter chapter 21, verse 7, you know, this is one of the promises of God to us. It says here, He overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Gusto ko po maalaman, kayo po ba ay anak ng Diyos? Are you sons and daughters of God? May I see your hands. Please uh, raise your hand. Wow. Those who are, thank you. Those who are uh, at the Sapphire uh, uh, Hall. Pwede po bang makita ang pagtaas ng inyong kamay? Are you sons and daughters of God? Wow. What a privilege having a sons and daughters of God. Just recently, just to tell you, I discovered my name is in the Bible, Jemuel, and my father um, uh, gave me that name because he's a Bible reader. And uh, he told me while I am growing up, he told me that my name is, um, the meaning is warrior. Uh, Guerrero, okay? Mandirigma. Pero hindi po ako palaway. But I used to be a um, uh, arbiter, referee for those who are quarreling. That's why people uh, 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 people follow me because I am the leader wa- during my young young years. And I found out just recently, if you have your uh, Google, I saw my name. Through the help of Brother Ardi, I saw my name in Google, and my name is, the meaning is, in biblical names, the meaning of the name Jemuel is God's Day, Son of God. Wow! I, I, what a privilege having this name. How about you? Do you have your name? Can you look at the Google? What the, what's the meaning of your name? You know, our name is very significant. Its name, its individual, our name is very significant. But you know, when we reach heaven, God will welcome us. And he said, he who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. Wow. But don't worry. If you're... If your name has no meaning uh, in biblical meaning in, uh, in uh, the Google, uh, but in the Bible, we are qualified to become children of God. Okay? Let me, uh, let me uh, see in my Bible. In, if you have your Bible with you, please open it in John chapter 1. Verse 12, it says here, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Would you say amen for that? Meaning to say, even though you have no biblical meaning through um, Dr. Google, but in the Bible still you have a privilege having a children of God. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the promise of God. To the overcomer, only overcomers will be translated to heaven. And I believe we are all preparing for that heavenly kingdom. Though in this world, there is no permanent thing. The only permanent thing is change. Right? My dear brothers and sisters, today, the Lord is so good to us. The Lord is so merciful and He is but willing to give us blessings 
And in return, let's give honor, praise, and worship to our God. A while ago, it was read by Sister Alma in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 9 to 12, that says, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the land, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which seated upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders of the four beasts and fell before the throne of their faces and worshipped God. In verse 12, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. What a scenario. It was in the vision of John the Revelator, of which at the first part of John 7, it was a um, declaration of the 144,000. But in verse 7, uh, verse 9 to 12, it depicts a picture of those people who were saved with white robes. Just imagine. Meron silang mapuputing damit. And that is the robe of righteousness of Jesus Christ. It was through Jesus Christ who made it possible for them to wear that robe. They are qualified. And they have palms in their hands. It means there is victory. And they overcame all the trials, all the obstacles in this world, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, those people who pass through difficulties, difficult situations in this world, you will notice as what the spirit of prophecy declares, according to Ellen G. White, that Adam and Eve, while having this sin of the multitude, the great multitude, Adam and Eve have, have tears in their, in their eyes. As they saw the people, the multitude, who had defects, Nagtaroon na po ng iba-ibang mga itsura. I don't know, physical structure. Lumiit. No? They become small. Filipinos. They become small. Or some, small. But, okay, the height, but the, the size is big. Parang hindi proportion. Marami na pong depekto ang nangyari. Even the, the outward appearance, okay? Nagkaroon na ng iba-ibang itsura. Oh, nagkaroon na ng mga, ano bang tawag doon sa mga nag, uh, nagpapasunog ng mga warts? Iba-iba oh, na yung mga tumutubo sa mukha. Ang dami-dami. There are so many things that became uh, uh, a, a defects in physical appearance of the person. Much more. Relationship. Broken relationship. Broken homes. That's why when Adam and Eve sees those multitudes, great multitudes, they were having tears in their eyes. My dear brothers and sisters, but they were an overcoming, overcomers. 
That's why God welcomed them as Jesus introduced Adam and Eve to those people who surpass the trials and difficulties. My dear brothers and sisters, if you will go and look at the very beginning since the foundation of the world when man fell into sin, it was the very start, okay, that people had acquired defects. There is what we call decay, even the plants. My dear brothers and sisters, when Jesus Christ came in the New Testament, Jesus declared at the Mount of Olives about the Beatitudes. Huh? As what I have said this morning, there are some of you who are uh, named as Macarius in, in Greek. It is translated in, in uh, English, uh, happy or blessed. That's why if you have that name, you are blessed, happy. If you will follow uh, one by one the Beatitudes, my dear brothers and sisters, it will narrate how you will need a guide, you need a support, you need the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ to inspire you in order for you to acquire and to, to obtain mercies and grace to overcome more difficulties in life. Okay, so uh, just take a look of this um, chapter 5 of Matthew. You will notice here about God's inspiration in his disciples. Blessed are the poor in the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Lahat ng mga negative, meron siyang positive. The Lord will, the Lord will provide. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. If you have a pure heart, the lisay na puso, makikita mo ang Diyos. Have you seen God? Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Just imagine, yun palang mga Marites, Marisol, Marekon, hindi pala ito ngayon lang. Even at the very start, when Adam and when Eve uh, falls into temptation, uh, when um, a uh, serpent tried her, what is a sample? Sabi ni, sabi ng serpent, is it true? That God told you that when you, whenever you eat the, 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 this fruit, you shall die? Hmm? And Eve uh, responded, yes. God said, I will surely die. We will surely die. Is it true? Huh? But the serpent said, no. Just take a look. Look at me. And when he ate it, huh? he told the uh, um, at Eve, and, she, and he said, you know, if you eat, if you eat this, you will become like God. Your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God. Just imagine. Today, we have a lot of these things. But you know, rejoice and, and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they, the prophets which were before you. My dear brothers and sisters, I will go back now to this. As what Adam and Eve sees, those people, saints, saved by the grace and by the blood of Jesus Christ, overcomers, 
Today, my dear brothers and sisters, I would like you to know that there are things that made possible for us as the Lord declares that all of us will become an overcomers. It says here to him in the book, in um, Revela uh, Revelation, okay? Revelation chapter 2, verse, 11, 2, verse 7. To him who overcomes, I will give to it of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. This is the promise of God. Amen? He will bring it back. You will have the chance to eat again the tree of life. Verse 11. The Revelation chapter 2, verse 11. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Take note of this. In the Bible, there is first death and second death, first resurrection and the second resurrection. Which do you want to be part of it? At the first resurrection or second resurrection? Just yes, yeah, think of it, okay? At the first resurrection, those people who will be resurrected, they will go up and the angels will, will usher them to heaven. But those people who will be resurrected for the second time, they will be resurrected in order for them to receive the penalty of sin of which that is death. Wow. He said, they shall not be hurt of the second death. 2.17 of Revelation, I will give some of the hidden manna to it. And I will give him a white stone. And on the stone a new name written which no one knows except him who receives it. I like to have that kind of stone that in that stone my name is written in it. My dear brothers and sisters, are you excited? For now, I'm excited that I have that kind of name. But I am longing for that day when God will give me that stone that, is, that my name is written in it. I want to see that stone with my name. Another thing is Revelation 3, 5, He who overcomes shall be clothed with white garments, and I will, be not, I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Wow, my name will be blotted out. No more, no more sins. My name will be clear at the book of life. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar of the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more, and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God and the new Jerusalem which comes down out from heaven, from God. And I will write on him my new name. And also in 321, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my father's throne. And I also overcome and sat down with my father on his throne. Wow, the Lord our God will be with us forever. I will sit beside him, talk to him. We will tell all the stories of our experiences, and the Lord will tell me the stories. Wow. I want to see and I want to experience that kind of face-to-face -face relationship, seeing my God, seeing my Lord and my Savior. 
And you know, these verses are all written in red. Just take a, take a look at your Bible. All of these promises are written in red letter. It means to say that it is the inspiration coming from Jesus Christ. He was the one who spoke these words and just narrated and scripted by, written by John the Revelator. The Lord, as, as what um, the Spirit of Prophecy tells us, the glories that await the faithful overcomer are beyond any description. The Lord will greatly honor and exalt His faithful ones. They shall grow like the cedar, and the comprehension will be certainly increasing. And at every advanced stage of knowledge, their anticipation will fall far beneath the reality. My dear brothers and sisters, my challenge to this church this morning, whether you are attending church services and you are not a member of the church, I challenge you, stay faithful to the Lord. Stay, faith, stay faithful because you are also part of the overcomers. And as a church, those members of this church, be united, be faithful. As what we have revised this, uh, this uh, bulletin that we have, tell of his love. No matter circumstances that we have, maybe some um, relationship, maybe in the home, a little bit um, problematic. But you know, there is a solution for that. If we know and if we have the love of Jesus, we can also share the love of Jesus to others. Would you say amen for that? And keep it in our hearts, in our, in our minds. It says here in the Signs of the Times, April 20, 1891. But in Christ and through Christ, we are to dwell in the family of God, learning to become one in faith, in doctrine, and in spirit that at last we may be received into our eternal habitation. This world is not our home. We're just passing through, right? That's the song. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My dear brothers and sisters, I, as your pastor, as a senior pastor, I'm about to live this church. But I had an experience just for, it's about, I, I computed, this about 486.67, days from the very start when I accepted the challenge for the task entrusted to me as the head pastor of this church. But you know, in my experience, from the very first day, I did my part. As you look around, maybe this is an old building, but we have a lot of things to uh, maybe to renovate. Uh, we have to build. Okay. We have already um, constructed a pastoral house in order for our pastors to have a nice shelter as they serve his people, God's people. But I remember when during that time when I started working it out, all the documentations, there is difficulties. I have no, we have no documents yet in order to start. But uh, this is a challenge that we work it out until we finally started. And then we, when we started the, the construction, 
there were um, uh, noise and our neighbors um, went to the barangay uh, and they have uh, uh, although they, they they are friends they are our um, uh, uh, brothers and sisters pero merong mga bagay na kailangang ayusin but you know we pass through until such time that there is a excavation another noise there is a what we call um, uh, different things uh, that had happened along the way of constructing the building until finally it was done but for some nobody hears the noise as what the temple that solomon built there was no noise until it was finally done you may visit our pastoral house and some renovations of this church many projects that we have studio the uh, the um, uh, the chains of connections of our pipes using the the big uh, uh, tank upstairs and many more but you know i am most interested not only building construction, but building relationships. Would you say amen for that? That is the most important thing, building relationships. In this church, there's no need of a competition, but we need to have in mind a completion. God has given us the task to complete the services, the ministry. The ministry is not the same. We have a different capacity. We have a different skills. We have a different talents. Don't compare yourselves to other persons. You may not be an eloquent speaker, yes, but that is not the requirement in order for you to become an overcomer and to reach the heavenly home. But God will use you. God will use us. And today, I'd like to say thank you so much to uh, Pastor Adventist Church. I learned to love and uh, I felt the love that you shared to me and my family. Yeah, there is a difficulty in, in separation. Maybe that is uh, when I studied uh, CPE. I trace my, myself. I, I'm, easy, uh, I'm not just easy uh, to uh, love, I mean, uh, immediately. Kasi po ang akin pong, I'm a long, long, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I'm a marathoner. Pang long range po ako. So siguro, medyo ganun din, kahit sa pag-ibig, hindi agad ako ma matutong magmahal. Pero pag ako po naman ay umibig, ang hirap naman pong makaalis. Alam niya ni Dr. Pinky. My dear brothers and sisters, just to give me a quote, and ever has it been known that love knows not its own death until the hour of separation written by Khalil Gibran my dear brothers and sisters today I'll say not goodbye but for the sake of the ministry of the Lord that as a pastors there is no permanent from time to time we will be assigned to other churches until such time that I'll retire I will not retire but i will continue on i will not uh, end but i will continue on doing the ministry because the lord has called me when god calls me when my parents uh, brought me to the altar for a blessing child dedication it was not the first time but i my parents did it twice you know why 
on the second time, I am almost to die. They have no money that, that time. The only left in their hands is the tithes and offerings. Instead of using it, going, brought, bringing me to the hospital, they brought me to the church. And that, that was another child dedication that I've he- ever experienced with my parents. That's why I am so blessed. Maybe that the, the, the meaning of my name is true. I am God's son. And you are also God's son. We are all children of God. So today, just to uh, have you, I mean, uh, to give you a part of this, I would like to, uh, to ask uh, Sir uh, Harold. This is the favorite song of Ellen White. This is entitled, Never Part Again. And I would like to ask Derek to uh, flash on the screen. And I would like you to sing this song, Never Part Again. Maybe you are not used to sing this song. But I would like you to sing this song. And after this, the, the choir will sing for us as uh, uh, we will about to end our service this morning. Let us sing this song.
what the text in this song. Never, never part again. When we reach the heavenly home, we will see each other again with the great reunion and all the tears, all the joys we will experience having a bonding, sharing of our experiences with our loved ones and with Jesus Christ. The choir will be singing a song of which it depicts about as we see Jesus Christ face to face. We'll have a time of reflection. The righteous God who made it possible to give his life for us in order for us to be saved and have a part in the great multitude. the sky shall unfold, preparing his entrance, the stars will applaud him.
account. Do you want to see Jesus face to face? The one who made it possible for us to be saved. And Jesus Christ is coming very soon. And that is what we proclaim. That is what we tell the people. And today, we are near. We are nearer than when we first believed, according to, to Paul. And today, without further ado, let us listen again, once more, for another song that pictures or depicts about the coming, the very soon coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.
thing. Thank you so much. And uh, once again, I would like to say thank you. And may the good Lord bless you. I will not uh, say goodbye, but just to leave you for a while. And uh, if not uh, in this uh, vicinity, maybe in some other place, we will see each other again. Much more, we will see each other in the heavenly home that God prepares for us. May the good Lord bless us. Thank you for the choir and thank you for all the things. I cannot name it one by one to those I will give uh, thanks. We'll be singing our uh, um, consecration song. Sister Marnie. Shall we all stand? God be the glory. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful experience that we have had, worshiping you in truth and in holiness. We are so blessed, O oh God, with so many things that we uh, could not count it, but Lord, we are so gr uh, grateful and thankful. And because of this, my dear brothers and sisters, because of the love of the Father and His grace of His Son continually overflows in our lives and also the Holy Spirit that continually guides us and inspires us. Now unto Him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory within with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen.